Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on this session of Empowering WPF Developers: A Journey Through .NET 9 and the Road Ahead. My name is Pankaj Chaurasia and I'm the Engineering Manager for WPF and I'm very thrilled to share the exciting updates that we have for WPF in .NET 9. So, moving along, here's our agenda for today. We'll start with why why WPF and give a little bit of background on why WPF still matters. We'll touch upon the brief history of WPF, where have we started from, and where have we landed? The mission statement of going forward. What is what is it that we expect WPF to evolve into? And then we'll focus on uh, what are the improvements that we have made in WPF in .NET 9, which includes fluent theming, hyphen-based ligatures, and security updates. Last, we'll conclude with what is the plan ahead uh, from .NET 10 and beyond. What is the high-level goals that we are trying to achieve? and then some of the resources that can help you get started uh, on this journey now uh before we touch into why wpf uh let me actually first introduce wpf so wpf is a resolution independent and a vector based ui framework that was created to create desktop applications uh in a in a very different paradigm as compared to its predecessors it was written from ground up and it was uh, made to solve problems that uh, that the predecessors the uh, previous pre ui frameworks had the introduction of xaml that is extensible markup language gave rise to uh, a entirely different way of writing uh, ui desktop applications now why wpf uh, wpf is actually very feature rich when you when it comes to xaml controls data binding uh, uh, media controls animations elements there's a lot of features that actually are already packed in in wpf next next move move along is uh, wpf has been there in uh, in the market for more than 15 plus years with this it with this comes the batch of uh, being time tested and uh, battle hardened technology there are a lot of enterprise applications today that actually have uh, big commercial applications that that use ui framework as wpf uh, in their applications uh and of course comes documentation uh there are a lot of online resources msdn stack overflow pull side videos youtube videos you can see people uh solving different kind of uh wpf problems so there's a very good chance if you get if you get stuck in anywhere you'll have uh, enough resources to refer to and uh basically get unblock value create your wpf application now uh as i mentioned uh WPF has been then uh, around in for 15 plus years uh, let's take a look at the brief history of how WPF has evolved into this state so WPF started its journey from 2006 where it was launched uh, with .net framework 3.0 and it was launched with visual studio 2005 now over the years it has got multiple updates it has got multiple improvements on data binding documents uh, splash screen web browsers Uh, newer controls were added in .NET 4 and later onwards, like calendar, date picker, uh, right until 2015, where in .NET 4.6, transparent window support, HTPI, and touch improvements were actually added. Right until that time, uh, all of that was in WPF framework, which was closed source. Now, in 2018, WPF actually moved to .NET Core 3.1, where it was made open source. Now, looking at here. right from 2018 to 2022 or rather i should say 2015 to 2022 not major updates not many updates were made to wpf actually it would break out the question like is wpf still going to be supported is it uh, is microsoft still investing in wpf and to that answer we actually uh, in 2023 we actually came up with the first roadmap of wpf where, where uh, we want the uh, framework to evolve to and it marked the very first public api approval that we actually had for wpf and we also started adding new features to wpf so in 2023 we started with adding open folder dialog api and then hardware isolation hardware isolation support over rdp so we want to with this huge a gap between 2015 and 2022 where not major features were added that has led to some erosion of trust over uh, over the long term viability of wpf so we want to make sure that we are in a state where we restore that trust and make sure that wpf remains a, a preferred choice for developing ui desktop applications now to that end here is our mission statement 
We want to make sure that WPF delivers the best in class user experience when you create desktop applications. And to that end, here are some of our guiding principles. We want to first make sure that WPF is very strong in its fundamentals. Make sure that the, the roots of WPF are as strong as they were uh, there when it was written. So focus on performance, security, and reliability remain our core values. Next, we want to make sure that we deliver on features that community is most in interested in. Now, the next, the next guiding principle that we, we, are, we have is we don't want to build things in isolation. We would want to actually build a thriving versus community where people can actually participate in uh, API reviews and making sure to uh, making sure how we can improve WPF uh, in in its future. And last but not the least, improved transparency on what we are what uh, progress we are making to to regain the trust that has been that has eroded over the years. To the right, you're seeing a list of, uh, we, we took an inventory of the top voted us uh, on the community. And I'll come to, uh, come to that uh, in a bit on uh, why, what focus, uh, uh, where are we basically taking our data from. So moving along with, with that background in mind, uh, in .NET 8, uh, after we shipped all the new, uh, new features in .NET 8, we wanted to figure out what was the next big item in .NET 9. So with with community inputs and uh, and multiple meetings from our stakeholders from uh, from both open source as well as enterprises, uh, fluent theming and hyphen based ligatures were the top priority, and uh, this this was made clear to us, which is why in in .NET nine we were able to uh, we were able to dedicate enough time to get uh, get those things uh, working. So fluent theming, uh, which which is basically the Windows eleven style fluent themes uh, in WPF, I'll I'll come to uh, in deep about it in later in the session. The next we have hyphen-based ligatures, a long-standing uh, issue in WPF that is now resolved, and then some of the security updates to make sure that uh, WPF continues to remain secure uh, going forward. Now, deep diving into Fluent theme. First of all, from a UI framework perspective, uh, having a good UI appearance is a fundamental aspect. Now, over the years, WPF uh, has has been running with Aero 2 as the default theme, which was launched when Windows 7 uh, came out. Now, over the years, Windows has evolved to a state where uh, we have got uh, Windows 11 uh, look and feel and ex appearances for uh, user experiences. Now, we don't want WPF developers to be left behind. We would want WPF applications to also take leverage uh, of the of the new enhancements that are coming in the UI space. We may have to make sure that the applications can uh, basically take advantage of the uh, new UI design guidelines that that are there. To that end, uh, fluent theming was delivered, uh, keeping in mind that this was the topmost uh, ask from the community. Now. Uh, the fluent theme that that comes in WPF is actually packed with multiple features, such as rounded corners, accent color support, light and dark mode support, window backdrop APIs, uh, accessibility compliance. A lot of things all packed in uh, fluent themes. Now, we also have uh, we also have created a WPF application that is available on the store right now. Uh, if you search for WPF Gallery. This WPF Gallery application is is aimed at showcasing all the fluent features that are actually bundled with uh, WPF in .NET 9. Now, uh, you can actually go ahead and uh, visit the short link akms. Uh, slash WPF Gallery to take a look at uh, how how the fluent themes in WPF work. Now, uh, we'll go to a, a little deep dive on fluent theming and see how. Uh, how you can take advantage of fluent theming in your applications. Now, here's the plan of uh, of our demo. Now, we'll take a sample WBF application that is written in uh, written to consume Aero 2 theme, that is the default theme, and then we'll take the necessary steps to upgrade it to fluent themes. Along the way, we'll sort of solve the problems that you may also encounter when there are styles collisions and and like different margin and padding, and then we'll see how how to consume the newer APIs and uh, how the integration with OS feature works. Uh, and lastly, we'll also uh, step into different uh, areas where how you can control different elements of integration. Now, with that said, let me switch to uh, the code here. Now, 
running the application here. Now, what you're seeing on screen is basically a WPF photo gallery application. This is photos all, all around here. And if you select on a gallery application and you hit on this edit icon, so you'll basically see different properties of this, uh, of this picture. Uh, you can go ahead and crop it and you'll see different, uh, different elements that you can actually uh, edit your photograph with. Now, this is a typical WPF application that you would generally use. So let's go ahead and uh, migrate this application to Fluent Theme. I'm going to close this out. The very first thing I'm going to go is, uh, let's, uh, let's go to Fluent Doc and see what we need to uh, figure out. So ak.ms slash WPF Fluent Doc. So in here, uh, here is the is the thing that you need to enable in your app.xaml to uh, get the fluent thing started. So I'm just gonna copy copy this here, and then uh, in my in my app.xaml. So I'll open the app.xaml of my application, and I import the fluent theme here. Control P. So it says fluent.xaml, and let's start with actually only importing this and see how your application looks like. Cool. So your application is already launched, and uh, and it has it has picked many elements of, of fluent design. Uh, the background itself is is has uh, is dark now. Um, if I were to select this and go to this, uh, the edit icon, you see uh, the default controls are already styled. Uh, there's there's this element of uh, the underlying uh, in the text controls, calendar control. Uh, in code, uh, if I go to different uh, UI controls, all of this is already styled with uh, Aero. While um, all of this looks um, okay, this uh, this thing here does not look right. I believe uh, there are some uh, margin padding corrections that we have to apply. So let's go around and fix that. So in here, uh, so these are some of the steps that even you will actually encounter when you are upgrading to any new theme. Uh, Fluent theme comes with different uh, margin and margin and padding values. So you may have to adjust a little uh, based on your application. So I'm going to go to um, resources and then go to and go to styles, custom styles. And there's no fun uh, in seeing me type, so I'm just gonna uh, bring the newer styles. So what this does essentially, um, let me just uh, remove all of this. So what this does is basically set up the, uh, it basically sets the uh, margins to appropriate values uh, for, for the current application. Now let me run this application again, and we should see the, uh, the floating menu to be perfectly aligned. So I'm going to select this app, uh, this picture, and yep, it is a lot better here. So we got one thing done. Um, the next thing that I would like to do is uh, the save button. Does uh, it's already blended in this application? So I would like the save button to actually uh, be highlighted here, and and by highlighted I mean um, something that makes it a primary button. So in, in, in this particular application, uh, the colors that you are seeing here, they are basically coming from uh, the accent color of what your Windows is actually running with. So if I were to go to uh, settings and change the accent color, you would see your application actually reacting to that. So I'm going to change my accent color to slightly tinge of red, and there you go. Now, now all your controls are uh, picking up that accent color. Yep. Now I would want my save button to actually also reflect that and to uh, to find out what style should I apply here. Let me actually open WPF gallery here. Now, this WPF gallery basically showcases all the fluent uh, design principles. So I'm gonna go here and uh, basic input button and you see there's an accent button here. Now. It, it says button.style and there's a dynamic resource that I have to apply to my uh, button. So I'm just gonna pick this. So 
So style dynamic resource accent button style. I'm gonna close this. In photo editor window, I've got uh, I've got this button called save, and I'm just going to put style equal to dynamic resource accent accent button style. Yep, and I can hit refresh now. Let me restart my application. And let's see how the uh, button looks like. Yep, that looks like exactly the accent color that I would want. So now we will, it not only comes support for dark, uh, if I were to change my uh, theme to light, your application actually responds to light mode as well. So pretty cool that your application is actually behaving a very like a very good citizen in uh, Windows ecosystem. Uh, for now, I'll switch to dark mode because I'm a big fan of dark mode. Uh, next, we'll, we'll pick up a single control and we'll see uh, what are the steps required for you to actually uh, style that in, uh, in, fluent, uh, in fluent design principles. Now, this live preview is basically a toggle button that basically uh, enables you to see the live preview of whatever changes you're going to make here. So basically, you can see a little preview here. Now, I would want this live preview button to actually look like the settings icon here. So um, let's go around and style this. If I were to... Uh, Take a close look at this control. This basically has a bunch of rectangles in here, and this has a fill of accent color. Now, let's let's go around and style that. So, we we could come custom styles here, and we import. Uh, let me let me just import the style, and we'll go through it uh, together. Now, this template here. Uh, is basically deriving from a toggle button. We we want uh, the button that you're seeing there to be a toggle button. And it is basically a stack panel which has multiple nested borders. The outside border called the root border and the inner border called as thumb border. And when the, when the uh, toggle button is checked, we would want the horizontal alignment to be on the right hand side. Let's just run it and see uh, how does it uh, look up here. All right, uh, let me edit it here. And yep, looks like we've got it. So on clicking, the, the horizontal alignments is resetting. And I believe, I think uh, it's, it's a good start. Now, next what, uh, next what I want is the, the colors that are there in, uh, in settings, I would want to replicate them. Like I would want the accent colors to actually get, uh, get filled here when the uh, toggle button is checked. Now for that, I'm going to again go to WPF gallery here. Now, in WPF Gallery, I'm going to do it colors, colors, and I'll see uh, what is the fill colors. Now, in fill colors, you'll see a lot of a uh, lot of colors. Um, basically, in accent color, I would want the accent fill color default brush uh, for the outside rectangle. So let me just bring in the uh, the other two setters that I have. So. Here, what I'm doing is basically uh, setting the thumb property background to be text on accent for fill color, which is this exactly. Text and uh, the uh, root border to be set as accent fill default color brush. So the accent fill default color brush. This is the color that I'm, uh, we are using there. And uh, for the other fill colors, we're gonna do uh, for the other accent colors. Uh, going to go to text and then text on accent color. Text fill uh, this one. Text on accent fill color primary brush. So both these colors basically uh, help you define how to render the text in the align in alignment with uh, the accent color that you have. With those two things in place, now let me run. Uh, the application again and see what the effect looks like. Yep, it it looks like it has it has just fixed. So uh, this is how uh, generally the process will happen when you will write your own controls following fluent design principles. And WPF Gallery is a very great way to actually find out what colors to use and what brushes are available to you. Uh, 
for uh, redesigning our applications. Now, uh, with that said, uh, if you if you have noticed, uh, the application that's running it actually uh, has a slight uh, sorry, the application that's running it actually has a slight tinge of uh, transparency or translucent effect, which is called window backdrop effect. Now, uh, you actually can disable uh, disable this with a switch. So if you were to go in your uh, CS drawers, you can actually import this uh, the switch, which actually says uh, Windows dot uh, disable window fluent theme backdrop. And if you set the value to be true, you can actually see the effect of uh, your app not being translucent again. So if I were to run this again, okay. So as you see here, the translucent effects are gone and your window is exactly uh, running in black background. So that's uh, that being said, uh, we've got hooks for uh, changing accent colors and uh, changing themes that you that's all available in uh, in the what's new page and you can actually find out what are, what are the different uh, controls that you can use. Um, so that's about the deep dive on fluent theming now. Let's switch back to uh, the PowerPoint slides again. And the next feature is hyphen-based ligatures. Now, ligatures are special characters in your font that actually combine multiple characters to create a glyph. Now, you, you must have seen this effect in multiple, uh, in modern code editors where using a special font actually renders uh, special characters differently, such as uh, double equal to, negations, fat arrows, comments, they get rendered differently. So these are basically ligatures. Now, for WPF applications that are not on .NET 9, basically, those hyphen, if your ligature has got hyphen in them, they won't be rendered, uh, they weren't rendering properly. So, in .NET 9, we actually got to fix that, and this was actually the top voted issue in GitHub, so we, we got to fix that uh, in .NET 9. This actually helps you improve application experiences if you have code editor-like features, just like what you see in the animation here. Moving along, uh, here are some of the security updates that that uh, we worked in WPF. Now, ensuring that WPF applications remain secure is our topmost priority. And towards that end, there were there have been multiple security fixes that went into .NET 9. Now, Pen IMC, uh, Documents Area, Packaging, XPS, all of them uh, had vulnerabilities reported and they were fixed uh, with with the newer versions of .NET. Uh, pen IMC uh, is a crucial component in handling uh, pen related components. Uh, document and packaging uh, basically uh, help you uh, are, the, are the areas where uh, WPF applications handle documents and handle packaging and XPS related uh, functionality. Now in here, uh, the, the uh, vulnerabilities that were fixed were uh, allowing attackers to uh, take unauthorized access to your application, uh, escalation of privileges, and uh, with the .NET 9, we were able to fix uh, all of them. Uh, the third and important point is binary format removal, and I would like to sort of uh, deep down in that as well. Now, uh, binary formatter is, uh, is an abstraction in .NET that allows you to basically uh, take binary objects and uh, serialize them and deserialize them. Now, .NET as a whole is moving away from binary formatter uh, due to its inherent uh, design security flaws, uh, binary formatter, uh, the way things have been designed in binary formatter is uh, does not allow it to, to get fixed in place uh, for all the security vulnerabilities that it uh, has, which is why we actually recommend users to actually move away from binary formatter and use alternative uh, mechanisms for data, uh, uh, data loading and unloading, which is XML serializers, data contract serializers, binary reader writers, JSON, so that you uh, you you can mitigate uh, the risks associated with binary formatter. However, we are also uh, cognizant of the fact that not all applications will be in a position to mitigate this in one go, which is why uh, while .NET has removed uh, binary formatter from its core uh, and now it's uh, it's being offered as a separate out of band package. If you must use in your application and you're unable to uh, remove the use of binary formatter, then you, for enabling that, you can actually uh, 
download this package, install this, uh, install the package called system dot runtime dot serialization dot format is, and basically enable a switch that says enable unsafe binary serialization uh, to true. That should uh, that should enable restore the use of binary formatter in your applications. However, uh, retraining the fact that we absolutely this actually exposes your application to uh, vulnerabilities that are known. So uh, we we recommend that you uh, that you make sure that you uh, use the alternative mechanisms for uh, any kind of activities in in this space. Now, uh, with that said, uh, that actually covers what we had for .NET nine and for .NET ten. Uh, our focus continues to remain uh, remain on uh, improving the fundamentals making sure that WPF has the best performance out there and with the uh, with the support of .NET, of new .NET abstractions that actually help us, uh, that would help us improve rendering time, uh, improve XAML loading time, a any and all the things that actually improve performance is, is going to be our focus uh, in uh, .NET 9 and beyond. And while while you actually work on making sure the fundamentals are strong, we have got better performance. We also want to make sure WPF developers remain productive, uh, reducing XAML verbosity wherever possible, uh, making sure that we have got tooling upgrades which help users write WPF applications uh, in lesser time and uh, with with great quality. So that's a high level plan of what we have uh, in .NET 10. Uh, moving along, to be very honest. We could not have done this without the awesome support of our community members, uh, Milosh, Thomas, uh, H3X, DS, 1NZ, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of that person, uh, Hellgab, Lind Lindexy, Badgen, all of the all of the great uh, community members have contributed in making WPF uh, in its current shape. And many others who have helped raise issues, uh, review our pull request, uh, participate in discussions and API reviews, we are very thankful and uh, we are very grateful to have your support on, on this community. Uh, a special call out to uh, Leshek Momian, uh, who is the author and owner of uh, WPF UI. Uh, without, his without his help, we, were, uh, we could not have delivered Fluent King. So uh, a very uh, heartfelt gratitude to him. Um, now, that, that covers all the content that I had for WPF in .NET 9. Uh, as uh, as the next steps, uh, we would want you to try it out. Let us know, uh, you know, what different applications you're uh, you'll be building with .NET, and we cannot wait to hear uh, from all of you. Uh, here are some resources that can help you get started. Uh, our community, it, should you encounter any issues, uh, you can actually file issues on our GitHub repo, and we'll uh, we'll respond and uh, we'll get to fixing that as soon as possible. Uh, with that said, that actually covers uh, everything that I had. Um, I'm very excited to actually share all these updates with you. And uh, with, with your support, we can actually make uh, WPS uh, the next best framework out there. Thank you so much.